birth of this peach color here. So we're going to say block category. We're going to displace H1 tag as a block tag. Okay. Then we're going to say the width of the tag. The width of the tag, let's make it 50%. 50% the distance between the tag. It's going to make it half the distance of the section tag. Okay. In addition to that, let's move the margin space to the left. Remember, margin space outside of the box. So from the left, let's move that to M spaces, margin space to the left. Okay. Actually, let's move that 0.75 M spaces. So it appears right here. Okay. Now, I want to give this a background color. So I could give this a background color inside my class tags, but I don't have a class tag that supports the opposite of this color. I could make one, but we're going to decide to just make the H1 tag a permanent change to the H1 tag and H1 tags inside of section. So go to background. We're going to sample this salmon peach color. We're going to go to our color palette. Now again, I'm working on Macintosh, so it might work different on your Windows computer. So I'm going to say I want to make this a darker version of my peach colors. So I'm going to basically do something like this and hit apply. So this is padded. This is simply padded. Now if you want more padding, let's put in say one M space of padding. Would you give it something like this? Now that's a little too much. So let's make this point for M spaces. M space is a good thing to use because it's relative to the size of the type. Okay. So let's do a couple things here for punch here. Let's give this a rounded corner. In fact, let's give this a different type of rounded corner to make it stand out a little bit better. So how do I do that? I select the CSS rule that I already have. Down here, I'm going to scroll up a little bit, make more room here, and scroll this back down. Okay, so I'm going to go to the Add Property tag. Let's move this back up again. So H1 tag inside of section, add property. And we're going to click here, and we're going to say D-O-R-D-E-R hyphen radius. Now, a couple of you made comments that you don't have CS5, you have CS5.5. You have CS5, you have CS4. So very important step here. This interface is not available in CS5 and CS4. However, stink on top of your feed here, guys. What does Dreamweaver do? Dreamweaver writes code. Dreamweaver writes code. So you can simply take the code. I'm going to publish these pages here. You can take the code and simply use the code that this interface creates because all Dreamweaver does is write code. So let's do border radius. So we're going to say border radius. Let's make, no, let's make it the same for all. So top left is 0. Top right is be 25 pixels. Bottom right is going to be 0. Bottom left is going to be 25. Okay, so I've done a different type of rounded corner for my H tag. Understand something very important. This is not a div tag. This is not a HTML5 tag. It's simply an H1 tag with a background. So if I go to live view, I can now see what I've done here. Pretty cool. It just basically adds a little bit of eye appeal to that particular H1 tag. Now, in addition to that, we want to put a box shadow. So how do I do that? Let's make a change, save a change. I can go back to the property for the H1 tag. I go to properties and I say BOX shadow, box shadow. I get the same interface here. I'm going to say box shadow offset's going to be three tab three. Box radius is going to be four. Box spread is going to be four, and box color is going to be black, which is simply pound symbol zero zero zero. Pound symbol. I hit the wrong key here. Zero zero zero. Now, if I hit the save button, command save, and go to live view, you can't see the box shadow. Now we can do a WebKit code for this, but I just want to share with you, you can see the shadow 
until you publish it inside of a web browser. So let's just simply publish this inside of a web browser. So inside my browser here, I can now see there's my drop shadow. Certain things inside of Dreamweaver you can't see even in live view. You have to go to a web browser. This is now published inside of a web browser. So now I can see my round corner for this particular H1 tag. That's all this is, is an H1 tag. So let's go back to Dreamweaver. Okay, so some things you can see. Okay, now let's make this type a drop shadow. So again, I'm working with the same H1 tag. I'm just applying all the rules to the H1 tag. So I go back here, add property. I'm going to click the menu here. I'm going to type in TEXT hyphen shadow. And this I'm going to give, let's make this two, tab two, tab four, tab black, pound symbol zero, zero, zero. Of course, I can just click right here and pick black as well. Okay, make a change, save a change. Okay, so if I go to my code for a second, again, I try to keep you guys away from code because code can be very confusing. Okay, if you go to H1 tag here, H1 tag inside of your section, these, these are all the things I've done to this. This is just border radius. It starts in the top, top left and goes around. That's how this does this. If you wanted to have the same border radius, you're going to say zero, no, zero, zero, zero. Okay. Now, most browsers, my browsers support this, but some browsers you have to change the WebKit and other types of changes, Mozilla and WebKit. So again, this we can see inside of the live view. So if you go live view, I can see my drop shadow or my type. Just like I saw the drop shadow for this up here, okay? But I can't see my box shadow. You can't see the box shadow unless you publish it inside of a browser window. Now I can see my box shadow. So let's continue on building the rest of this out. We're going to format this a little bit differently in a previous next video. We're going to do some drop down menus here, do some cool stuff, some interactivity. We're eventually going to take the site into Adobe Edge and apply animation techniques using jQuery, so stay tuned.